Law Assignment 10. Let's get right into it. Wouldn't you think that blasphemy, spreading misinformation, and defamation against public officials would get you in a boatload of trouble? What if I said you can get off scot-free? Having now completed nine previous speeches on freedom of speech and the amendments as a whole, while also reading the Dean Strassen's What Everyone Needs to Know, I feel as if I can answer these questions with great context and accuracy. As U.S. citizens, we must be aware of the guidelines and the limits of the U.S. Constitution in order for us to be knowledgeable of all of our rights. And the U.S. Constitution protects both bad and good, but always to an extent. Today we will touch on why the First Amendment protects speeches that contain blasphemy, disinformation, and or misinformation, as well as defamation against public officials and or figures. Let's hop right into it. Um, blasphemy is defined as a term for expression that challenges a pre prevailing religious orthodoxy. The reason for the U.S. Constitution protecting blasphemy is quite simple. The government is taught to neither favor nor disfavor any religious belief. Strawson further explains this on page 197. And we'll go right here in the text to get right from the text. Alrighty. In both contexts... The unifying notion is that ideas and beliefs are for individuals to formulate and espouse, exercising their freedom of conscience without government coercion or interference. Um, committing blasphemy just comes down to the person com uh, speaking blasphemy, um, just disrespecting someone's religion, someone's beliefs. Uh, the Constitution will always protect someone just being disrespectful, unfortunately. They just can't go much off and they can't really make, you know, a court case off someone just being ignorant towards someone's beliefs. Um, uh, main point number two. A big piece to all these assignments thus far this semester has been based on speech and whether or not they are punishable. A lot of the time, it is always punishable when harm transpires. And for speech where spreading misinformation and disinformation is present, it is not punishable unless there is an harm induced, just like we discussed earlier in past assignments. And Strawson, as well, goes into this on page 188. Right, let's pull this up right here. All right. On page 188, the term disinformation or misinformation has no specific legal meaning, but is widely used to describe false or misleading speech that cannot constitutionally be punished precisely because its potential harms are to disfuse and speculative. Um, you know, kind of similar to the first point, there's not much, um, meat and potatoes, as I sometimes say, for the, for a court case to be really, um, influential and, you know, able to withstand the whole process, you know, just because, you know, someone spreads misinformation on Twitter, it's not like that person can, you know, get in trouble. It's just it's the way it is. And we'll kind of, Heading into main point number three, it kind of is along the same idea. Um, now, when it comes to defamation it, towards public official or figures, it is up to the person targeted to shoot down the rumors. Strassen makes this clear on page 205. All right. To prevail in defamation claims, public officials slash figures must prove that the defendants acted neither knowledgeably or knowingly or recklessly regarding the falsity of the defamation statements. It would not be enough to show, as it would be in defamation lawsuits brought by non-public officials slash figures, that the defendant had acted neg negligently. Um, the first example of this, and when it truly came into play, was back in 1964 in a court case between the New York Times and Sullivan. The New York Times had advertisements that negatively portrayed Sullivan. As a result, they went to war. So it's always going to be up to the person that was targeted to clear all these rumors. And I agree with um, You know, they have to be like, no, that's not true. Because if they don't, then people are just going to run with the idea that it is true. So it is up to them to clear up their name. Uh, so kind of just as a review, um, to sum it up, people who commit blasphemy will not be in trouble. It's just a matter of them not showing respect. Misinformation, when it is spread, needs to be cleared up by the party who put it out, or they could face backlash. Lastly, when there is defamation towards public officials or figures, it is up to the figure targeted to clear it up, similar to misinformation getting spreaded if it gets too far and it ruins their image. Um, and as a closure, misinformation and defamation will always happen when you put your out, yourself out there in the media. It will be up to you to clear it up and prove the people wrong. And blasphemy 
that will always come down to um, just people not showing respect, similar to hate speech. You know, the, the person just doesn't know any better. They're just an overall terrible person, but unfortunately, it doesn't mean we can put them behind bars. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.